Some days you want to grab the keys to your fancy ride, maybe a convertible and go for a weekend cruise, let the wind blow through whatever hair you may or may not have. Well, that was Todd Martin's idea as we've reached the middle Saturday at the U.S. Open. Welcome to U.S. Open Morning Drive presented by Mercedes-Benz. Well, it was an episode of Friday Night Lights of sorts for the U.S. Open, but it was more fizzle than sizzle when Misha Zverev knocked out 10 seed John Isner in straight sets. But the real fireworks began in the night session. Sophia Kennan, Russian-born, training in Florida, just like her idol, Maria Sharapova. They faced off, and Todd, what turned out to be an exciting matchup. Sharapova started the tournament beautifully against Simona Halep, and it, it, she has sustained a level of play. Admittedly, her play was not as good last night as it was on, uh, on opening night, but her tennis is really strong, and her competitive uh, spirit and her skills are really showing, showing through. And so for Sharapova into the second week, and she now improves to 20 and 0 under the lights at the U.S. Open. That ties her with Pete Sampras for most wins all time since they began night play here in New York. Carolina Pliskova is winner of eight of her last nine matches. The runner-up last year takes that one next to her name against Zhang Shui of China in a match that she's expected to win. Well, expectations are on on all the top seeds, but uh, we've seen throughout this tournament that that doesn't always work out very well. Uh, Pliskova is a, a great talent, obviously uh, the first seed, but I also have to, I think she has to be concerned about people like, uh, like Zhang Shui because the ball is going to come back. She still has to execute her game plan and especially somebody as disciplined as Zhang Shui, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of danger in this matchup. Pliskova is going to have to be solid, but she's also going to have to be a very aggressive player against uh, against the Chinese. And don't forget, Zhang holds the record for the biggest upset of a reigning number one when she was 226 in the world back in 2009 and beat Dinara Safina. So she knows what it takes to topple the very best. Let's talk about Agnieszka Radvanska. Ten seed flying under the radar, not having a terrific year, but she's got a good shot at reaching the second week. But standing in her way is Coco Vandeweghe. See, I would look at it differently. I think Coco Vandeweghe has an amazing chance not only to make the second week, but really progress, give herself a chance to make it to the finals of a, of a Grand Slam. We saw her in the semifinal earlier this year in Australia. Uh, if she can be uh, controlled in her attack against Radvanska, I definitely give her the, the nod. The, the challenge against somebody who is as disciplined and as good of a counterpuncher as Radvanska is attacking too early and then pressing. Uh, if Coco can stay balanced and, and be calm throughout this, throughout this match, I really like her chances. She's playing great tennis. Coco Vandeweghe is having a terrific season at the majors, semifinalist down under Elite Eight at Wimbledon, but she has lost five of six to Radvanska, all five of those victories for the pole on hard courts. Well, Shelby Rogers is looking for her third top ten win. And she's hoping to do so against arguably the most prolific player of the WTA Tour this year, Alina Svitolina. Yeah. Uh, Svitolina has had a great year, and she is a, one of those people who will likely win a Grand Slam in the future. Yeah, Shelby that. Rogers, I would take, would need to take a different tack than Coco Vandeweghe against Radvanska. She's going to have to really attack and press, push Svitolina from the from the from the onset. If she doesn't. I think the uh, I think Svitolina is just way too solid, and uh, plus uh, after the three and a half hour match that Rogers played the other day, uh, you know she's she's not going to be able to get in, uh, not going to be able to afford to get into a protracted match again. Svitolina, winner of five titles this season. Some other notable matches on court. American Madison Keys, winner in Stanford a couple of weeks ago, takes on the Indian Wells champion, Elena Vesnina. And back when Arthur Ashe Stadium opened some 20 years ago, two young women were born. Roland Garros champion, Elena Ostapenko, and her opponent, Kasakina. They will also fill out the schedule on the day. Let's transition to the men's side, if we can. And David Goffin hurt his ankle at the French Open this year, was off the tour for a couple of weeks, but he's back. He had a four-hour, 19-minute match against Guido Pea in the previous round. He's going to take whatever fitness he has left against the high-flying showman from France, Gaël Monfils. Yeah, I think this is, a, this is a tough match for David Goffin. He is a, a wonderful player, incredibly balanced uh, He's got a great forehand, great backhand, returns beautifully, serving better. But Monfils is such a physical sort. And um, in, this, in this battle of fairly like styles, 
I think the bigger, stronger, better athlete is going to win that matchup. Six seed Dominic team is enjoying the slower courts here at the U.S. Open this year, flying a little bit under the radar. He hopes to use that knowledge as well as his previous mastery over Adrian Matarino of France, who is unorthodox and can be tricky. Uh, he can be tricky. He's a, he's a really smart, intelligent player. But I would look at Dominic team and say there's just too much firepower over the course of five sets for Manorino to give them too much trouble. Um, they have to play. Uh, team is not uh, at his most comf comfortable on the hard courts. But as you said, the court's a little slower this year. It's given him a little bit more time. And for his big swings, he needs that time. And, uh, but I, I really don't think that Manorino can press him and take time away from him enough to really hurt him. Team is 5-0 and oh against the Frenchman overall, but they were in a big one up in Cincinnati that required two tie-break sets for the Austrian to get across the line. Well, the man known as RBA, Roberto Batista Gu, has put together a terrific 2017, 41 match wins. He's reached the fourth round of all three previous majors this year, but he goes up against the Tower of Tandel, 2009 U.S. Open champion Juan Martín del Potro. Uh, this matchup is, is great, and I look at this and say the winner of this match are the, 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 the one candidate probably to displace Federer and Nadal from the semifinals. Um, the, Batista Agut, I love the way this guy plays tennis. He is a throwback. He thinks he's very competitive, incredibly level. And, um, and shows up every single day. He's gone through a lot this year. His father was in a horrible accident, has, has had really bad health, uh, and a lot that he's been able to deal with and it never reflects in, in what he's doing on the court. Uh, Juan Martin Del Potro, on the other hand, wow, I mean, former U.S. Open champion, still uh, after several surgeries on his left wrist, uh, does not have a backhand. His backhand is not what it was before surgery can barely put topspin on the ball because of his left wrist limitations, but he has learned how to play the game differently, manages points, uh, and, and demonstrates great skill. I think this is going to be a great matchup, and I'm really interested to see where the winner of this match goes. And Juan Martín Del Potro, a member of the Elite Eight in 2016 here at the U.S. Open, was 142 in the world. Now that he's back up to number 28, who's to say he can't make another deep run here? Well, we are three matches away from that dream semifinal. I don't know if you've heard about this, and if you've been living under a rock tennis fan, there's the potential for a first-ever showdown between world number one Rafael Nadal and the man lurking creepily over Todd's shoulder, Roger Federer. Federer's endured two five-set matches to get to this point, but now he takes on another 30-something Feliciano Lopez. Uh, this, is a, this is a dangerous matchup. Uh, however, I think after these long matches that Federer's had to play, these five setters, against uh, ground stroke uh, based players in Eugenie and Tiafa. Uh, I think he's gonna relish the opportunity to play somebody who's gonna give him targets. Feliciano Lopez is going to attack, put a lot of pressure on him, but I think Roger's really gonna enjoy having that target play shorter points and have, have to hit one or two really good shots. Plus, with Lopez's backhand, Federer will have the opportunity to continue to attack and put pressure on that backhand passing shot. And speaking of Rafael Nadal, he's on the court against the lucky loser from Argentina, Leonardo Meyer, in what looks to be perhaps the easiest match of the tournament for Nadal as he seeks the second week. But the way things have gone, who knows? Hey, one other note, tennis fan, just to recognize 31-year-old Gaël Monfils as of yesterday, now shares a birthday with the projected 2035 U.S. Open women's champion, the new baby for Serena Williams, the 23-time major champion giving birth yesterday, six U.S. Open title crowns to her credit. She's used to picking up uh, prizes. Well, she's picked up the ultimate one, so congratulations to Serena. Well, that'll do it for our U.S. Open morning drive. This was a great idea, Todd, to hop in this Mercedes-Benz. Whose idea was that? Well, I'm going to give you credit. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you again tomorrow. U.S. Open morning drive presented by Mercedes-Benz.